hi everyone hello hello um welcome back welcome back for today's video i'm going to talk about um claiming pip personal independent payment whilst having autoimmune liver disease personal independent payment replaced the dla for those who are aged 16 to 64 so to be eligible for PIP, you have to be 16 and above and you have to be under the state pension age. With PIP, you get roughly, um, not roughly, yeah, about £23 to £148 a week, but they will tend to pay you on a four weekly basis. Um, so to be eligible for PIP, you have to have been living in the uk um let me just go and double check this before i give you the wrong on the wrong info to be eligible for pip you have you must have lived in england scotland or wales for at least two of the last three years been in one of these countries when you apply if you have recently returned from living in another eea country you might be able able to get pip sooner the process is different for northern ireland and i know nothing about it so sorry um you can get PIP whether you're working or not so it's not like ESA employment support allowance where depending on how much you're earning you may be capped or something or they may just stop it completely PIP is completely different to that so that's the one decent semi thing about it is they don't cap you like that um it, it it shouldn't affect your other benefits but you know with the government it does all sorts of happened um if you're not a British citizen and you want to claim PIP, it says you must live or show that you, are in, you intend to settle in the UK, the Republic of Ireland, Isle of Man or the Channel Islands and you can't be subjected to immigration control unless you're a sponsored migrant, immigrant. Sorry. Um, you might still be able to get PIP if you are a refugee or have a humanitarian uh, protection status. So, yeah. Um, with PIP, they sort it out into, there's two categories they, they, they sort it out into, da um, daily living difficulties and mobility difficulties. And then they give you a scoring once you have an assessment based on, on those issues. And then the, the questionnaire has questions um, that focus on your daily living difficulties and questions based on your mobility difficulties. And when I get to the section on questionnaires, I will tell you about that. Um, with PIP, you have to have um, your medical condition, need, you need to have had it or your disability, it needs, you need to have had it for at least three months and it has to be a long-term condition so it has to it can't be like a short-term thing that will you know in a couple of months you'll feel better it has to be over nine months that it will be affecting you um so they have that but if um um knock on wood you have a health can you have a condition which will give you um less than six months or so to live then that's a completely different form that you would need to fill in a different you wouldn't it wouldn't be pip that you'd you would do uh, you do something called the um, ds1500 um so there is another completely different form to that that's completely different to pip so if if you if you have if your health has deteriorated to that point um that's something you would look into and not pip um so yeah um i'm so sorry i keep arming i'm so sorry uh, what else what else so with the question with with claiming pip with claiming pip the first step you take is you have to call them you have to call them um the dwp you have to call them and basically go over um, via the via telephone um, a sort of a mini questionnaire with the person on the phone who kind of checks if you're eligible to even apply before they send you the form so you have to call first before you get the form so when you call she'll ask you questions like whether you've lived in the uk whether you've lived abroad so all of those things i mentioned if you in order for you to be eligible she'll basically he or she will ask you um she just checks that you are eligible and you do meet the criteria they will she i keep saying she just because the last person i spoke to was a woman they will send you um the form and once they send you the form they tell you sometimes 
they'll tell you how um because when you when you call you've more or less already made your started your application process so there's a time length and how long they can just hold it on for so they tell you when you have to send all your information um to them by so um i think they give you like how many weeks do they normally give you god i think they maybe give you like maybe like four weeks or so or less four weeks or give or take so they'll tell you they'll send you the form and then in the form it's split into like i said your daily living difficulties and your mobility difficulties and they ask you about any health professionals that work with you or that you have encounters with so in this stage i mean when i say i mean anyone and everyone that you see or you speak to or you have encounters with you mention it and you put their details or just the generic information about them in the form because you you have to literally sh like you just have to bombard them with load of information you, you have to submit every form of evidence relating to your health that you can so um psychologists social workers um doctors gp um anyone honestly anyone that is a professional of a certain level that you deal with you mention that you mention that and you put it in the you put it in the form and then and then i'm just gonna because i wrote down um i've got what what my um form was so the first section is usually um they ask you how your disability affects you and then the, one of the, um, the questions are usually, like I said, your proof, your, one of the first questions is all your health professionals that work with you, what your medical conditions are, and they want to know the, the date. <laughs> they want to know when this started affecting you. I don't remember the exact date I was diagnosed with autoimmune, but I remember the year and I remember the month. So I usually just, I don't even remember the month actually. So I usually just tell, I usually just write the year that i know of these of the diagnosis roughly so i am i mentioned i have autoimmune hepatitis um chronic pain depression and anxiety um i am i've had episodes of seizures so i put that in there basically anything that requires me to be going to hospital and being seen by somebody is on that list as a, as a condition because it's up get a doctor to come and argue with me that's how I see it. So I list all of those and I put it, um, I put I put like the dates roughly for that. And then you'll have questions. So you split into like, they'll have like what, they have like one to like 20 something questions, but they split it or 15, I can't remember, sorry. And then they split it into A and B and C and all this business. So question one is usually relating to just your condition, what it is, and then they'll ask you about your, um, your medications when i say medications i mean include everything that you take everything even the vitamins that your doctor gives you you know to help you you include that because those are medications you include everything even things that you know you don't mind buying over the counter you take it relating to your health and because of something you list it so your immunosuppressants so, so that's the prednisolone if you take tacrolimus um advograph sarolimus mycophenolate so, basically anything that you take you put on there paracetamol anything ibuprofen we shouldn't be taking ibuprofen for liver disease but you put that in there okay so you list all your medications and then they will ask you um side effects of your medications how all of these medications affect you under no circumstance <laughs> under no circumstance do i want any of you guys filling in your forms and saying there's no side effect babe there is a side effect okay you know there is side effects that you have experienced while taking these medications so you list all of them you list all of them i mean all of them everything you can some people like with some of my medications i only experience like either one or two things and they're really minor i'm still listing that because listen it's a side effect it may be a tiny little thing and it's not a big issue and i can handle it it is still a side effect of the medication so i'm going to list it um what else so you list your the side effects of the medication how it affects you and then um 
so how do, for example so in one of my que my questions so one of the questions they ugh, the way they word the question is it says tablets other medications you're taking or will be taking and the dosages um any treatments you're having or will be having such as chemotherapy physiotherapy and dialysis so it's not just medication so it's about your treatments that you're going to have that you haven't had yet you're on the list for whatever you're waiting for you list it i'm going to repeat that tablets or other medications you are taking or will be taking and the dosage any treatments you are you're having or will be having such as chemotherapy physiotherapy or dialysis any side effects these have on you you list those so for example for mine um prednisolone i gave i wrote um i wrote down how much i take of it the, um, the dosage um is it once daily i i wrote once daily the side effects i experience low mood weight gain headaches insomnia it makes me um at risk of infections my eyesight has worsened due to the medication which is true um i also have low bone mineral density because of prolonged treatment with prednisolone um Another example here is uh, I'm on the waiting list for local community mental health. Um, yeah, list things like that. And then um, the next set of questions is relating to information about preparing food, whether or not you use um, utensil, um, certain utensils, um, how. So, for example, one of the side effects from the medication, um, the tacrolimus, is I get I get hand. Um, um, hand tremors my hands are shake which make preparing food difficult because you know can't be holding enough when your hands your hands are all over the place that's a problem so i list that as one of the issues with regarding preparing food um if you have to for example if you use um did i mention this in another area they might do that if you have to use like let's say um the devices so i have like a jar opener if you have one of those if you need those if you use those mention that extra um if you are oh, another thing i buy um already pre-chopped like veggies and things because it's easier for it to help me prepare for food you mentioned that so anything that you do in, in order to help you with your preparing food because there's another there's an you know there's there's like there's a section about um in there about food and I, I got myself confused ignore that and then they ask you questions about your eating and drinking and how that affects you so if you use easy to grip cutlery if you um how long it takes you to 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 eat you know um you know any any um difficulties you've mentioned so getting ever personal here but i also mentioned the fact that because of my medication and the fact i suffer from depression and anxiety sometimes you know that can also be a struggle um, for me to eat to get the energy or even depending on where my mindset is even have the desire to eat um they also ask you information on how you manage treatment so for example if you Dosset boxes. Everybody needs a dosset box. You should have a, a dosset. So pill organizer. If you if you have that, you make you mention that that you use that. So for me, um, regarding um, because they will ask you as well, like in another section, uh, because this is extra information on your managing treatment. They will ask you um how you cope with it. Like how do you get there? So. You just mention anything and everything. So, for example, one of my friends, um, Sarah, she comes with me sometimes to my appointments when she can. Um, I I have an alarm system on my phone which tells me when to take my medications. Uh, I have literally reminders all over the place actually when to take my medications. I carry spare medications, and things like that. I mentioned that. Um, I have my social worker who also checks up on me to remind me to ask me about any upcoming appointments I may have just to see if I've received any appointments that, you know because he knows all the people I'm supposed to see so he asks me about those have I had those appointments have I gone to this place have I done that he asks me of those info and I, and I wrote that down 
they also ask you about your washing and bathing any um issues you face with that do you use handrails do you have a um, supported seating so i have a walk-in shower and i have a seat in my shower i mentioned that um if um any difficulties i face for example i can't stand for long periods of time so obviously i ain't in the shower for over an hour or something my back would be gone by then um you know there are also the issues regarding the seizures and uh, how i may fall um if they also then ask you questions on how you relate to other people how you mix with other people so with the fact that i have depression and anxiety sometimes you know my mood is absolutely shattered so i can't do anything also autoimmune makes you extremely tired the prednisolone makes you extremely tired you just want to sleep all the time so <laughs> dealing with other people that's a bit of an issue because sometimes you're a bit grumpy as well um mood swings relating to prednisolone will also make you difficult for you to hang out with other people because of how you feel around them mention that um you mentioned things like that um i also mentioned the fact that because i have seizures i also get really anxious because i don't want to have a seizure in front of people so i don't want to associate with other people um they will ask you about making decisions about money do you need um like prompting do you need help do, does somebody manage your finances for you and uh, things like that um you know um um what else they ask you information about going out can you leave the house do you need assistance to leave the house does somebody need to be with you to leave the house like can you go about and be on your own um they also ask you about moving around so with moving around this is where it gets really problematic for some people with moving around because they will ask you they they give you in part of the um, questionnaire there's a section and they give you examples of like how far the distance can you walk and they may say like two double decker buses or things like that can you walk the the length of two double decker buses can you um i always tick it varies because one i don't know the length of two double decker buses so i am counting if i can walk the length of two double decker buses yeah so i say it varies because like all conditions depend sometimes you have decent days so it varies that's what i always put it varies because sometimes i can push myself to walk a, di a good distance other times my legs ain't aren't having it my legs aren't doing it my back ain't doing it and i'm not doing it so you know you have your good and bad days and some days you just can't so it varies and um what, what else did i write say about that um so some people will say yeah i can walk you know because they're thinking of the time when they were able to walk out their house go down to the shops and then come back and still be in good spirit about it and be like yeah they're thinking of those times you need to when you're filling out this form you are just thinking of all the times when you thought jesus oh my days what is going on here you need to think of those days when you're filling out this form like that's that's how you need to be with it um um so for me i said it varies how far i can walk um but uh, i need on bad days i need my walking stick as i'm in a lot of pain i do have a walking stick i'm just slightly embarrassed about using it sometimes so i don't tend to get it out um uh, i have to stop and rest to catch my breath several times i can go up and down um some steps if there's a rail for me to hold on to and i also see a podiatrist regarding my feet and things like that you know um and then they also they all they're also so that's how they split it so daily living so it's about yeah so it's about maybe for 15 questions actually so about 15 questions give or take so they will ask you that and then you where am i where am i lost myself again you you have to then send them so once you fill out the questionnaire what i like to do is i actually fill out i because i can't write read for long for for a while i can't hold a pen properly because yeah my handshake so i tend to type all my information down so i type that and i usually because uh the on the back of the form there is um a like one page or two page which is for you to write any extra information 
I tend to just type it myself. So with the questions, um, I would just say see see attached um, paper. And on that paper, that sheet of paper that I I have, I always write my full name, national insurance number, um, telephone, all my details on there. So they always have a copy of it, and I always make copies of it as well. So you fill that in. Um, if somebody else is filling the form on your behalf, they need to fill that form. They need to sign it to say that they're signing it on your behalf. Because sometimes they may just contact the person who has filled it on your behalf rather than contacting you directly. So if you're a parent and you're filling it out um, for your child, you need to sign it for your child. Otherwise, they'll be calling your 16-year-old. And if you don't want them calling your 16-year-old and stressing them out, so you sign it because then they can contact you instead rather than just contacting them but they may still con call them just to ask if they've you've they've given permission for you to speak on their behalf um always provide evidence like i said like you need to provide every form of hospital letter it doesn't have to be like the most recent recent like it doesn't have to be like you, have to, you don't have to ask your doctors for the letters all the time. I mean, I tend to if I want if I want something um, that I don't have. So if let's say I don't have any letter at the moment to prove that I'm seeing my psychologist, I just ask her to write to basically write a really simple one sentence letter stating that um, she sees me. That was it. Um, um what else so you you get like you if all your like your list of your any letters with your list of medications that explain your condition your disability you get that you should it would be really good if you have a really good doctor or a good gp or even a social worker someone that can help you it would be good to get them to properly like high level professional writing to explain exactly in depth how this condition affects you how like they need to basically just write about all the bad times you've you've, you've experienced they need to do that um provide them with with proof of all your um inpatient admissions so for me sometimes i'm i may just give them the uh, my admissions for the year you know i'll be like well this year i've been admitted and then i might combine it with the year previously because i'm in and out of hospital a lot i provide them with inpatient admissions you provide them information with your outpatient um, appointments you give them everything and anything relating to your condition and um I, i'm just trying to think what else you can, what else do you need to do you send they they send you the form with an um, a prepaid envelope so you don't and um, you don't technically need to pay for it the envelope though is only um to do, 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 the envelope is second class so if you want to send it like first class special delivery or tract or whatever send you'll have to pay that for that yourself and what they're doing now is they send you a text to let you know that they received your form and once they do that you then have to wait <laughs> so they can make you wait from for about eight weeks you could be waiting eight weeks um to to hear back from them from when you sent your form off but i have found a little way around that little eight weeks thing so what you can do is if you've been waiting let's say um maybe like a let's say five four weeks four to five weeks we'll give them like a month to get their act together so you've given them some time and you know that they've got your form or you know but you you can just play a bit dumb so what i did was i actually called up the dw um the pip inquiry line so the number you call to make your claim is different to the number you would need to call for the inquiry and i'll list both of them down in the description box so i called um the pip inquiry line and i was just like I sent off my application a while ago and I just got a text that just said we've received it and I never heard anything back and then with that they actually checked on the system as to whether or not they one received it and two if um, it got sent off because once they get the form they send it off to the assessment center oh. so the people that do the assessments are usually for PIP as far as I know the majority of the time is sometimes um, I am um, ATOS atos who are now calling themselves the independent assessment service or whatever they're calling themselves now 
but it may be capital or the other one but it'll be one of them um they will tell you whether or not they've sent the form off to them and then what um and then what you can do is i have the number for atos actually so what they do will do is you can ask for their number for the assessment center and then when you get the number for the assessment center you can call them just to find out where are you in the queue to getting your um your appointment for the assessment because with PIP you don't just fill out the form and that's it you have to do the assessment so when they um when they give you uh, oh, sorry i've lost track so when you call them what well, i was I, I basically was on the phone to them and i was just like um i've just come off the phone from the dwp they're the ones that gave me your number and said i should call you to find out um if i'm going to get an assessment anytime soon and they were like oh, okay and they would give you an assessment uh, appointment they literally gave me one and they were like you can go tomorrow if you want because we've got we've got times and they will do that the one thing that irritates my mind body and soul about these well actually loads of things that annoy me about these assessments but one of the things is it's never within a good decent traveling range it's always out of your borough like you're trekking for over an hour that's the most annoying thing ever you're always having to travel a, a while and so um you, you can do that if you you know make sure when you call them the assessment the place they're sending you for the assessment has a lift or it's on the ground floor and it's in it's easily access um accessible otherwise you know they're gonna be like okay well you still went <laughs> so don't do that call them way in advance call them way in advance and if you need to cancel because something an emergency or something's happened you need to call them way before your appointment time way way before either the day or something way before or just way before don't leave it like an hour or something don't do that absolutely don't do that because they will use that against you so don't do that um unless it's like a really really emergency like you know accident or something something out of your con completely out of your control then they will still use it against you but you can fight it <laughs> um i will make another video about the assessments because i'm actually going to have my second third one i'm going to have my third assessment yet again wish me luck um with pips um i in the next video i'm going to make about the assessments is what to do if you disagree with the outcome of the assessment otherwise this video is going to be really long so give me until next week or something <laughs> um i think i've covered everything it, it was a bit rushed and i do apologize i i tend to mumble and jumble but um so just before we end the video a rundown of everything i've just said in in a not so rushed way and i'm so sorry for rushing the video you need to be 16 and over um but under this their pension age you pip is paid on um four weekly basis so monthly basis you need to have been living in the uk you need to have had your condition disability for over three months and it has to be long it has to be long standing so it has to be um some an illness or condition um dis disability that will last over nine months you need to call up the pip line first and make your application by telephone first once you make your tele your application by telephone they check whether or not you are eligible you meet the criteria once you do that they will then send you the form and when they send you the form you provide them with as much evidence as possible every bit of letter you can provide you send it to them they send it they give the, the application form comes with a prepaid second class envelope but you don't have to use it if you want to use a first class stamp or you want to get second um special tr um, delivery tracking whatever you can use another envelope once they receive your form they tend to send you a text message to let you know that they've received your form all documentation that you are sending to the dwp ensure that it has your national insurance number and it has your name on it has your full name your name as you know on all your documents as the way it's written on your national insurance um what else uh once they get your application they send off to the assessment the assessment people are supposed to call you or send you a letter with an um appointment 
when they when they if they haven't done that after a certain time period because the DWP gives them um, an eight week waiting time so you can be waiting for for eight weeks but sometimes they like to exceed then you'll be waiting for more than eight weeks um, you can just try to cheat your way a bit forward um, by calling the numbers that I'm going to put on in the description box you call those numbers and you may be able to get an appointment a bit earlier and yeah I am really sorry um, for rumbling so much and being so quick with it uh, I will be making another video on the assessment of, of PIP and what to do afterwards and then another video on ESA employment support allowance thank you everyone for watching and I wish you all have a lovely I guess evening I hope you'll have the, a good day and you know just keep the faith alive